Price back again, and today I want to show you my latest creation. Um, this is a three-string cigar box guitar. It's, um, I'd say, probably like 85% reclaimed wood. Um, the box here is, um, so this brown finish is actually the original finish from uh, the piano that I reclaimed the wood from. Um, you can see right here, this is the top to that p uh, piano. Um, it was headed for the garbage dump, belonged to a friend of mine, and um, he asked me, like, hey, can you make a guitar out of this? And I was like, you know what, absolutely I can. Um, also the neck, so if you look closely at the neck, uh, kind of hard to see here, um, it's actually a five layer neck. So it's got oak, maple, and walnut, um, and there's actually strips of walnut veneer in between the lighter oak and maple, um, just to give it a little bit of contrast and um, you know visual appeal. Uh, with a flamed maple fretboard. And you can see there's um, a little veneer of walnut in there also just to give a little bit of contrast. Um, headstock. This is, it's, so it's got a scarf joint, um, which I don't know if you'll be able to see on camera here, but it's actually got a scarf joint. It's an oak headstock with um, actually a, a super thin walnut and then mahogany veneer on both front and back. Um, it's got Grover tuners. These are um, actually uh, I believe old Gibson stock. Then um, on the body, so I, like I said, so it's it's a cigar box guitar, completely hollow. It's basically an acoustic guitar, uh, but it's also got a piezo under the soundboard, right about here, and then it's also got um, a mini humbucker. So um, you can plug it in, get the piezo sounds, or you can plug it, um, switch it over, and get the humbucker sounds. Uh, it doesn't like to be blended. Uh, the two don't work well together because they're, they're different um, impedance signals. And, uh, you know, there's some, some intricacies that you got to get used to when, when you're switching between them. Um, you can see the tailpiece. This is actually a hinge from that piano um, that's been cut down, uh, screwed it in, and made a tailpiece out of it. The bridge, uh, so it's a floating bridge. Um, this is a, a, a piece of maple with a fret put in, and I put a couple um, grooves in it so the strings don't slide around. Um, and what's also interesting here is, if you look close, um, I've got two bridges for it. So um, I actually made this for um, my friend who owned the, the piano, uh, who asked me if I could make something out of it. And he wanted it specifically set up for slide guitar, so I actually made him two bridges. One so that he can um, have a higher action for slide, and then another one for lower action uh, for just um, playing, you know... <laughs> regular fingered chords and um yeah hope you like it um and enjoy i started by making the guitar neck um this ended up not being the final layers i used but um it was a composite of multiple layers of walnut oak maple and some veneer and then i went ahead and cut a scarf joint Next, I prepared the fretboard and cut the fret slots. You generally want to do this before attaching it to the neck, so if you make a mistake, um, then you have time to fix it. And then I went ahead and glued the fretboard onto the neck and, and cleaned up the profile. I also cleaned up the neck where the nut is going to sit, um, right at the edge of the fretboard and then went ahead and glued on the veneers for the headstock. This is both a walnut veneer and a maple veneer. Next it was time to shape the neck, so um, I carved out a rough profile with the Shinto rasp and then used a spoke shave to extend that shape uh, down the length of the entire neck. And then cleaned up where the headstock meets the neck. Once that's done, um, needed to clean up the heel. This is where the neck is going to meet the body. Then I started the process of installing the fret markers. Uh, first, go ahead and mark them out. Um, I actually made a mistake here. Um, I had accidentally drilled um, two markers at the 15th fret, and uh, I ended up fixing it, but you know what? I, I left it in there and didn't fully replace everything because I think it adds to the personality of this guitar. Then I went ahead and filled both the um, fret markers and the side dot markers with a metallic blue epoxy that really stands out on this wood.
Next, it's time to level the fretboard. So I just used a, a makeshift leveling beam from the level um, with some sandpaper, leveled the fretboard, and then treated it with a CA glue so that it is um, very strong and resistant to wear. I also inset the joint where the body and the neck are going to meet. Um, this will hide the seam and hide any rough spots. Then I installed the frets, uh, putting a little bit of wood glue underneath, just to make sure there's no space between the fret and the fretboard. And then went ahead and started cleaning up the frets, uh, normal level kind of polish. Time for the body. Um, this is a pretty standard mitered box that is made out of the reclaimed piano wood. Here you can see I cut the insets where the body and the neck will join. And now you can see uh, where I started the bracing underneath the soundboard. Um, this is a relatively traditional X-Brace. Once it was fit to the soundboard, I went ahead and uh, carved it to reduce some of the mass, uh, just to help it resonate. Then I cut a hole for the magnetic pickup and went ahead and drilled out the sound holes. I also sanded and stained all the edges of the box to make sure that there were nice joints. And then did a floral pattern ink transfer to the back so that you can see it when you look inside of the sound holes. For obvious reasons, this had to be done before I glued it back on. Once that's done, it's time to start assembling things. Um, I glued on the top. Then worked out where all the controls and, and decorative effects were going to be. Worked on the electronics. Again, I said this is one magnetic pickup and a uh, piezo under the soundboard. Then I cleaned and scuffed the surface of the box and put a coat of lacquer over the original piano finish. Here you can see where I made the tailpiece. This was half of an old hinge on the piano that I went ahead, cut down, filed it to shape, and then drilled holes for the strings to go through, as well as holes for the screws to connect it to um, the end of the neck. And at this point, it's in final assembly. So I started installing all the electronics, here you can see there's actually two volume knobs. I ended up scrapping one of the volume knobs because I tried to blend it. That didn't work well with the piezo magnetic. So I ended up using a three-way selector. I uh, drilled and installed the Grover tuners. Then attached some standard metal grommets to make the sound holes look nice. Time to string it up. Do a little sound clip here. So right now I'm running completely on um, the magnetic pickup. And then, um, you know, I can click it over, get some overdrive. And that is not cranked up. This is running through um, a Fender uh, Hot Rod DeVille 212. I could crank it way louder than that if I wanted to. Um, but I've also got, let me turn it down here, the piezo, which the piezo sounds really good, but it gets a lot of feedback. 
Uh, let me turn that down a little bit. Um, and it's also got a much hotter signal than the magnetic pickup, surprisingly. Get really loud. Just kick it back over to magnetic and uh, 